Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. It is yours truly, Crystal Leandra here today with Kat. We're doing a really awesome chat about Salem today because it is, uh, what is it, like Women's Month or something like that? I don't even know what it is. It's so bad. Um, sorry, I work way too much. I know that it was surrounding by like Celebration of Women for the month and I thought it would be really good to do a chat about Salem for a lot of reasons. Um, one being that most of the women that were killed due to witchcraft in Salem were women. There was a couple of men that were involved. And the other thing was is they didn't recently find uh, where, where the site happened, where the executions took place, till literally, like, within the last year. And they just recently, like, within the last month from that, have put up an actual memorial site. So it's crazy that it took, like, two or three hundred, four hundred years, you know what I mean, to get, like, a site and, like, a burial ground down. Like, that's nice, you know what I'm saying? So um, I'm going to just bring Kat in right now. Hello, Miss Kat. How are you today? Hello. How are you? I am wonderful. We are um, <laughs> having a, a really cool chat Um we're going to do Salem first. So this is a paranormal chat if you're new to the channel. It's going to be Salem first. Then we're going to swing into some ghost adventures because they had a more recent um, show on Discovery Plus that was also surrounding uh, summoning what they said was demons due to like a, t a type of witchcraft. So we want to kind of tear that apart. I'm actually going to bounce around for a minute, though. I know that Facebook streaming, when we're streaming live, like, we have a ton of people that download the podcast, so I know some people won't even hear this till later. But for some reason, our stream for Facebook hasn't been working. So I go through a program th called, that's called um, Restream, and I think I'm going to get rid of Restream and start streaming on uh, Streamlabs, which can also give you a platform for multiple locations so i know there's been people complaining that like they like to watch it live on facebook i'm sorry guys i don't know why i don't know what's going on with restream lately but we're gonna can it because i pay for it monthly so it should be working okay <laughs> work <laughs> why aren't you working okay i pay for you do you want to give me money back because for like the past two or three months you haven't been working correctly okay so anyway, <laughs> um, first I want to chat a little bit about um, Kat and I made the decision to set up memberships on YouTube, okay? So now this was a long discussion, right, chat, or cat, chat, cat, hey, cat, chat, chatty cat. I like that nickname, you know, it's chatty cat, it's so true. Oh, uh, okay, so we, we talked about Patreon, mm -hmm. we talked about... Mm -hmm. OnlyFans, we did. We considered OnlyFans. We were this close, you guys. Like, literally this close to doing it. I actually created an OnlyFans page for Ghost Girl Diaries, but the, the, the concern that I had was I don't want people to get the wrong idea. You know what I mean? Like... Watch this 50-minute pilot. I'm... I'm, on <laughs> I'm screaming. Um... God, Restream still isn't working. I still can't see how many people are on. I can see the chat in the Twitch channel. It's just a pain in the butt. So I'm just going to get rid of Restream. I'm tired of dealing with it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, we did. We made an OnlyFans page. And we were this close to, to, to you know, utilizing it. Because, you know, a lot of our fans are saying, you should just make an OnlyFans. And, um, you know, it was meant, it, it, originally it wasn't meant for, like, porn and, like, the porn industry. And, and I get that. But now it's taken over that industry, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I was really afraid having a page called Ghost Girl Diaries that there were people we can get the wrong crowd. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They're going to get the wrong crowd coming in there. Okay. And then there was going to be sheer disappointment. <laughs> it was not going to be what they were expecting. So, oh so we were like, we were throwing around all these ideas. I did consider putting the pilot on Amazon. Um, Kat, as you guys know, is a singer. She's had multiple albums out. She has multiple albums out right now on iTunes, Spotify. You can find them anywhere. And and being an artist, whether it's film or um, 
you know, vocally, you know, like musician, you get paid like pennies on the dollar. Like it's nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. I mean, okay. We want to talk numbers. Let's just, let me talk numbers for a second for my stuff. Elm's Landing album, the five song EP album Mm -hmm. was about $9,000 to make. And we've had well over like like 10,000 or 11,000 like streams just on Spotify. Mm -hmm. And I've made $23. Well, you know. So that's just to give you a little insight. I mean, not that it's just for the money, but I mean, you work hard on something and you expect to see some form of compensation, you know? Same. Um, But it's not that much for for royalties. Which you would think, you know, paying $9,000 for an album... You know, that's not a, it's not a penny, you know, like that's not a penny. And then you look at something like the pilot, like I did. Okay. So the pilot, I wish it cost $9,000. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wish it did. That's cheap. You know what I mean? Like that's a clap. But, um, mine, uh, the pilot cost us, um, me a hundred thousand dollars to make one pilot. And that's pretty typical. You know, that's pretty typical. Um, but to put it on Amazon, I was literally going to be getting pennies back. Uh, and that didn't make sense to me, you know, like, no, and once again, not that it's about the money. It's really not. It's just about you put so much work and effort, like blood, sweat and tears into something. Um, you want it to get into the right hands. Like for me, it's not even necessarily about the exposure, you know, like I'm not really worried about the exposure. So Kat and I did decide to make a subscription set up on YouTube, and we've actually had quite a few people sign up, so shout out to you guys. We love you guys. Um, and I did put a Amazon wish list um, in the bio, which I'm going to include that in every single bio, so that people can see what we need and see what, what the money is going towards um, from the subscriptions. You know, like this isn't a typical money grab, like I always say. Um, a lot of YouTubers will be like, oh yeah, I set up scrip- subscriptions for my fans too. That's not what this is about. This is kind of like you could think of it as crowdfunding, and you guys are sort of on the journey with us. And um, it's very expensive. You know our story now. You know what it's taken and how hard it's been through this whole journey of, um, you know, expunging all of the last resorts that we could to try to get the pilot signed in the middle of a pandemic. And so, yeah, you know, we have to move on to the next one and, and we've already had people sign up. So shout out. We love you guys. Thank you so much. Like it makes Kat and I not feel so alone. Yeah, the support means <sighs> It does, knowing that people, like, are excited for us and, like, want to know what the future, like, holds and what it's bringing. So we appreciate you guys. So we have um, four different subscription tiers. I don't have all the info in, um, in front of me. One is $3.99, one is $9.99, one's $24.99, and one's $49.99. The $9.99 one, so $10, is the one that you have to sign up for if you want to see the pilot on YouTube. It's on a private channel. Uh, well, it's on our channel, but it's, like, a private section of the channel. And um, we've already had, I think, what, like 10 people have watched it or something like that. Um, Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. So I'm excited. So if you guys are interested in subscribing for us so that you can see all the hard work that not only myself did, but my entire crew did. um, Kat, what was your experience shooting a pilot? Like your first official pilot? Honestly, it felt damn good. It felt really good to put all of that work and... You know, because Crystal taught me and other members film. Um, so I was really excited to um, put it to work. Implement everything uh, you've learned. Yeah, yeah it, it was such an amazing experience. And I'm, I'm itching to get back on set. <laughs> so, yeah, you watched the sizzle. So Kat and I, uh, you know, we know what the sizzle reel looks like. Obviously, we know what the trailer looks like. We know what the pilot looks like. <laughs> we probably watched it. I think we've watched the pilot like maybe 200 times, if not more, like literally. So I, you and I haven't seen the pilot in like a year, right? It's been a while. Yeah. yeah. We needed a break. So, <laughs> so, so I finally uploaded like the sizzle, the trailer, and Kat was watching it when I first uploaded it like a, what, a week ago, and Kat calls me. She's like, oh my God, I forgot how good it is. It's so good. I forgot. I was watching it on the phone with Chris. I was like, that drone footage. The drone footage was really, really good. Yeah, we had some complications with the drone footage too because um, should we do? Should we talk about it? I, I, <sighs> yes. 
I think we should because oh. it's a good release. We okay. okay, we filmed I laughing so hard and I shouldn't have been laughing. We filmed so in this town called Chloride, Arizona. That's no secret at this point, and it's kind of like a black hole. <laughs> and it, really is. it is, you know, you got Chupacabra, you got Bigfoot, you've got Hellhounds, you've got aliens, you got, you know, demons and ghosts, you got a little bit of everything in there. Um but for some reason, the drone, uh, there must be really, well, there, okay, it's a mining town. It's an old mining town. I, I told you guys how the location we were in was actually sliding into the mine, like, quite literally. And I, and there's copper, there's, there was gemstones, because so, we found crystal up the mountains, didn't we? We found crystal and rose quartz, and there was quartz everywhere. So, like, I think the, everything, there's literally everything. So, because... You have this natural uh, mines coming up from the earth, which is all electromagnetic fields generating. The drone damn battery kept dying like over and over again. And we had taken three backups, but we would get the drone in the air for like 10 minutes and then the EMS were like drain. And we didn't want the drone to crash because that's like a thousand dollar drone, you know? Right. Yeah. And, and it was like laughable at that point because... It, like it just happened so much you know we were just like all right it's fine just get the cameras out it's fine we'll just do go and walk <laughs> there was a couple t yeah mountain. we did yeah there was a couple times we had to walk up and down the mountains crystal's an idiot because she was wearing demonia boots god i it like well okay we were not planning on going hiking i didn't take my docks with me i had my demonia boots Ooh. I thought I was going to die. I can't believe I didn't roll down that mountain, honest to God. Cat was like, are you okay? I was like, I'm fine. Six small steps, it's fine. But these boulders, like, on these mountains that were literally like this, you had to, like, climb over these rocks. Yes, and I did that in Demania boots. And if you don't know what Demania is, Google it, because it's ridiculous. Oh, it was so stupid. Because oh, it's traumatic. Yeah, it's trauma. So oh, Nikita said, anyone who hasn't bought Crystal's book, I finished it today. And wow, standing ovation, absolutely blown away. Thank you, girl. It's I appreciate so you. I know. Yeah. I'm almost done with questions to ask um, Crystal some things. Yeah, we're, yeah we're going to do a separate stream. So it probably won't be on a Friday. It's going to be literally like an extra day of an extra stream. And Kat's going to give me a um, journalism questionnaire about the book. And um, that'll... Do I have the right to respond with, uh, I plead the fifth? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll give you them before we go on. Okay? Oh, good, good, good. Over. Gotta make yeah, good. no, the, just the overall theme of the book was, no matter what your struggles are, remember, you wrote this shit in your path, boo. I don't care how hard it is. You planned it before you got here. And there's no right or wrong way to deal with things. You just have to make sure you know and you're solid on your path and overcome it, no matter how hard your struggles are. And we all have struggles, whether that's internally or externally. And it's, it doesn't matter about the destination. It's about the journey. And it's making sure that you're putting yourself first. Self-love, self-healing is like always the answer, in my opinion, when it comes to struggles. So yeah, thank you, Nikita. I appreciate you for that little, little chat. Um, so let's scoop into Salem because we have okay. some tea on, on ghost adventures. Yeah. And I finally was able to get through that episode. You know what I mean? Oh, you did? Well, I got so bitter because he had, like, the female camera attack. And once again, it wasn't because she was a female. It was just because, wow, it took well, a while, you know? Okay, I'm going to add this in here just because I feel the need to do so. Um, but he said on that episode that, like, she had been there for a while. I looked up her credentials, and she's been there since last year. Mm-hmm. Well, that's she's a while. Well, it's more than one. So, <laughs> I think he's being a little overdramatic, you know what I'm saying? He's well, being a little too overzealous. Well, well, you know, he's proud. He's proud of himself for having a quality, so that's good. Okay. The infamous uh, Salem witch trials began spring of 1692. Why are all of my, my Macs are all going off at once. I don't know what's happening. They're giving me alerts and there's no alerts. You know what I mean? So wow. clear, yeah, there's, there's witches in my office. What's new? Um, 
so I just want, I'm going to spurt something out really quickly because I feel like this part's always left out. Kat lives in New England, as you guys know. She has been to Salem as many times as I've been to the Stanley Hotel. Like, hundreds. Okay? Like, literally. And the thing that people always leave out when they're discussing Salem and the Salem Witch Trials is, you know, the first thing you think of is, oh, there was a bunch of people living in Massachusetts or New England, whatever, and they were practicing witchcraft, and um, the government didn't want that to happen, so... They decided to hang them. None of them were burned here in, in the United States. That was all done in Europe. Predominantly like Ireland and Scotland. A few in England, but predominantly Ireland and Scotland. Um, so a lot of people get that mixed up. Another thing they, they don't realize is that when there was an actual witch hunt going on here in America, the people that were accused were getting their land revoked by the government. So it was actually a huge conspiracy that people always forget to bring up. So what was happening is if you were accused of witchcraft, the government was automatically allowed to go in and take all of your land from you and your family. 100%. They owned it now. So the government was purposely like putting out what they called witch hunters to go out and find people that were being accused by their communities or, I mean, what would you call it back then? Uh, <clears throat> A, a parish maybe I don't know you know what I mean like when it's a little like little communities and they would find like a witch hunter it was like okay who's in here being accused of a witch and they go oh Mary's accused of a witch Mary we're gonna hang you at the stake and now the government gets to take your land and keep it so honestly it wasn't about witchcraft it was about persecuting women and it was about taking the land and the government was doing shitty things to the people haha ha, once again what's new so people don't realize it wasn't really even about witchcraft or magic. It was about conspiracies against women and taking and obtaining the land. And to this day, the government still owns some of the properties because it was handed over. If there were no um, like alienation or if people weren't able to hand it down to like nephews or grandsons or whatever, they, the government literally scooped it and took it. And that was it. And it was never given back. And it's just bullshit. You know, yeah. like... It's hard. It's so hard. Um, I'm actually going to be going back to Salem soonish. They just uh, reopened Salem, and I want to go to the apothecary there. Mm -hmm. so I need to go get some things, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, based off of some of the transcripts in the early time of um, the trials, probably within anywhere between the first, like, three to four months of them happening, they really only lasted a year. Mm -hmm. They didn't really last that long. Um, but in the beginning, they were convinced that there was some some dark energy happening because um, Salem, but was also known as Danvers at the time, was going through some real bad shit. Mm -hmm. um, disease, people dying, um, it was a really bad winter, crops were dying, and at that time, anywhere you would go, they would blame it on a dark energy or dark forces and then all of that. And um, it was probably though, probably about the fifth or sixth month in, throughout the remainder of the year that yes, Oh, your audio cut out. Wait. That was weird. Ooh, that was weird. Your, I totally just paused. Your whole audio cut out for like a minute, like straight up. Really? Yeah. You were just like gone. Okay. What, what, what did you last hear? You were talking about how, um, I don't even know, I got so distracted because I was watching you because you were literally still talking and like not, like there was no audio and I was watching your arms to see if you accidentally paused your mic and I knew you did it. That's so weird. And then all of a sudden your screen like froze and you were like frozen. This is weird. Okay, I'm sorry, I got really distracted. Uh -oh. She's, oh my god, you froze again. I can hear your audio. There you oh my god. That's my Ew, I'm really creeped out right now. I think Kat's got a demon in her house, everybody. <sighs> Kat is so connected to Salem. It's not even funny. I'm just going to take her screen off for a minute to see if she comes back. I'm actually going to disconnect with her. And then I'm going to try to recall her again. Um... She's had attachments that have come home with her from Salem, so this does not shock me. Uh, 
Okay, she said one second, so I think she's going to restart her, her program. So, yeah, she had an attachment that was coming home with her from Salem for quite a while, actually. And um, it was a female uh, living, uh, like, that, that would, like, live with her. And it was in this long, white, flowing sort of dress. And, uh, wow, even my restream is kind of um, freezing a little bit. Um, but anyway, this energy didn't like if there were men in her apartment. Um, it got really weird with her. And uh, let's see, she's calling me back here. <coughs> anyway, the um, she has a male roommate that was living with her. And the male roommate was starting to like get um, really weird visions at night and like pre chest pressure and stuff and she finally had to like ask it to leave and not come back so I'm not shocked by her having technology issues. How's it going Miss Cat? Never happened ever. I got really sidetracked like I don't even remember where we left off because I was literally I like no. did oh, it do it again? Okay, how many live streams have I done with you, Crystal? I mean, way too many to count. This has never happened. Mm -mm. I'm just saying, if Salem's back, you need to wait a minute, okay? Can we just wait? It's been a minute. So right? this is her Bye. attachment. She actually named her attachment. I was talk I was telling everybody about your attachment. She actually named her attachment Salem, and it's a female. Yeah. She's not, uh, she doesn't hurt women, but she does not like mm -hmm. men. She does not like men at all. So that she, Kat believes she is a, um, possibly an energy that was killed, um, during the Salem witch trials. And she, she comes often to like check on Kat. Kat will know when she's there. But if Kat makes a trip to Salem Mass to like go shopping or whatever, it's strong. It gets really strong, doesn't it? For like a few days. It, it does. I genuinely think it's, um, past. Uh, family. How's it sound over there? Is there anything movement going on or anything like that? Okay, this is weird. Is are you there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm here. All right, I'm wondering if I sh let me try my laptop. Okay, call I'm me back. Try my laptop. This is weird. Okay, bye. Bye. All right, sorry guys. Uh, maybe she just lost feed. No, I mean, we've done 80 streams together, and this is the first time it's happened, and it happens to be on the stream we're talking about, Salem. You know what I mean? I don't believe in coincidences, though, at this point, so that's just personally me. I was actually supposed to go with her um, to Salem last May. I had, like, my, my flight and, like, everything ready to go uh, May of 2020, but COVID hit in March, and I can't, had to cancel my trip. So I was really upset about that. I'd love to go back out there still, but Salem was actually shut down for quite a while because they didn't want tourists in because of COVID. So they weren't even letting anyone come in. Like if you, unless you had a Massachusetts um, license, you weren't allowed to go into Salem at all. And Kat lives in New Hampshire, which is only a couple hours away. It's a little bit north, um, but she wasn't able to go in because she doesn't have a mass license. So. Um, I'm waiting for her to come back through. Does anybody want to have any questions? You guys want to chat about anything like that? Don't blame her for not liking men. Look, okay. <clears throat> it was it was 90% women that were hung at the stake. That's all I'm going to say. And it was usually brought on by powerful men in the government. So I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Oh, tarnished Massachusetts reputation. Yeah, well, I don't know. You know, people in Mass are very open to um, to Salem still to this day. Thank God Kat has her backup laptop, huh? How's it going? Oh my gosh, my lighting is horrible on this. Ew, well, hang on a second. Okay, tell um, me when you're ready. Go ahead. I'll okay, take, okay. I'll take, I took you off camera. I can hear you still unless you want to mute your mic. Okay. <laughs> Just, um, so I'm looking for a question we have. How do you know if you have an attachment? <laughs> like, um, you mean like when I go to the museum and come home with Ed Gein? Like, I mean, it's not like a, it's not a fun thing to do. You just, I don't know. It's, you have to be in tune energetically. Um, Kat has actually gotten her attachment from Salem on camera though. She's gotten pictures of her. It's this girl with like this long white flowing, 
1800s, 1600s dress, corseted lace, like you can see it, um, and she's gotten photos and images of it. For some reason, it liked hanging around the bathroom <laughs> of her house. I don't know why. Um, but every time she, her, if you sit in her bedroom, I think, um, or no, it's her living room, you can see the hallway and you could see it walking through the hallway. She'd constantly send me pictures. It looks like a woman with her hair up in like kind of like a bun type of thing. And then a long white flowing sort of lace dress, uh, corseted, uh, big poofy, like bouffants type, type of dress. And uh, are we back? Are we ready? <laughs> Hopefully it looks okay and sounds okay. I don't have my mic attached to this thing. No, you sound fine. You sound okay, fine. Okay, great. Oh, good. Hey guys, sorry. Thanks. So. <laughs> <I'm> so sorry. <laughs> um, somebody oh, wanted okay. to know how you know. Well, I mean, Nikita said, "How do you know if you have an attachment?" I mean, I said energetically speaking. You know, like if I go to the museum, I come home with Ed Gein. Like, yay, great, Ed Gein's in my house. How do you? Yeah. How do you know if you have an attachment? So. When I got home from Salem, there was a definite, I agree with that, like energetic shift. And also what happened was I was having like weird, like what happened now with, with my computer technology issues, really right. weird cold spots in the house as well. And um, the first time I saw her was in front of my bedroom television. Yep. Um, it was black screen. I don't ever watch TV in the bedroom. So honestly, I don't even know why I have a TV in the bedroom, but I just do. And um, I saw her hair like flowing this way against like the black screen but it was like a faint white um misty look, sort of thing get, yeah. yeah like like misty look and um i she also liked the balcony a lot she liked the patio um so i would see like the back of her dress flow out and she would walk out there mm -hmm. um but it's been a long time since she's been here um so that was very, very strange. I have, guys, I've literally never had that happen before on my computer. Hmm. I have used that computer for a long time, and um, that was wild. That was wild. Um, but yeah, anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> before I was rudely interrupted by Salem, it's fine. Um, I'm going to have to stage later, because that was not cool. Um, <laughs> I have to stage cool. now. Great. I did it yesterday. I have to do it again. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, so... It, like around the fifth or sixth month into it, these men started realizing that people weren't going to ask questions about it, and that's you mean th when when the actual when the the tr the uh, accusations against witches started, so six seven months yeah. into it, then no one's questioning mm -hmm. it, and then that's when they're going to start abusing the system, sort of thing. Exactly, because the last guy, and this is when people started to figure it out, mm -hmm. um, because Giles Corey, um, if you guys are familiar with the stories of Salem Witch Trials, Giles Corey was the last to die. He was pressed to death mm -hmm. with rocks, and literally his last words were more weight, mm -hmm. because he just did not care. He knew what they were doing at that point. Giles had had some instances just for being a grumpy old man, but he never did anything really wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, when he was pressed to death <clears throat> right after died everyone started questioning what was going on because giles owned like half of the land in what used to be called danvers massachusetts and it's now salem um so that's when it kind of stopped and people started asking questions and then other people from other places were coming in saying like this isn't this needs to stop like this is hysteria what mm -hmm. you're doing and um judge jonathan corwin so where the witch house is in salem which is still there by the way it's beautiful in there uh he actually ended up packing out of there <clears throat> yeah like he left right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he left the house to his family and uh yeah he was like peace out i'm like wonder why mm -hmm. probably because you're a piece of poo human so and you don't but, think he's in that house because you've been in that house several times you don't feel his energy no i have seen his youngest son mm -hmm. i have seen his youngest son in there i saw him clear as day clear as day in a white nightgown and I it had been a while since I'd been in the witch house because I go there so much I, I don't really feel like a tourist there anymore mm -hmm. um, but I was bringing a friend to Salem and brought her to the witch house and uh, I saw him um, as a young boy he had long blonde hair and like a white nightgown in my peripheral <clears throat> and of course you look nothing's there um, a friend of mine came back from downstairs and told me that that exact, exact description was on an oil canvas painting upstairs <clears throat> of the youngest son his name was George mm -hmm. Um, which was crazy, but I mean, there's definitely residual hauntings in the kitchen, 
And we did. I did talk to a tour guide there, saying that there is still movement up there, hmm. and that would not shock me, only because <clears> of the <throat> fact that um, it, it hasn't been put on paper. But I believe it because of how just messed up this whole thing was in the first place. That um, there were uh, accusations and like, um, what is that word when they're um, they were trying to like find the witch's mark? They were doing um, it's not prosecution. I can't remember what the word is, um, but they were like dealing with people inside of the house because of how many people were being accused of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. So there was like a line of women secretly in the home being really abused um, to try to find any type of mark for being a witch. Mm -hmm. um, which, by the way, could just be like a mole. Usually is. Well, technically I have one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would have, I probably would have been hung and I'd be like, look, I don't have any land. What are y'all going to do? Like I've got... Been burned, okay? Was, oh, <laughs> I'm dead. <clears throat> so just to back it up too, one thing I wanted to say was where did like the witch hunt start? So it actually started in Europe um, between 1300 and year 1330. And it ended around the 18th century in Switzerland around 1782. But the, in the events in Salem took place in 1692. So I assume it took that long to get the messages sort of across to America, you know, where it was like, oh, there's witches, they're going to take over the world, and like, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, long-term exposure, what that ended up causing is that's, in my opinion, what caused paganism to, like, become a thing. Because if you're a, if you're a witch, it doesn't, you can do whatever you want. You know, like I've said before, like, being a paranormal investigator is witchcraft. You are doing necromancy. You are talking to the dead. That is witchcraft. Even if that's all you do, that is still a form of witchcraft. And um, what I think happened was they had these people that not only, like, the land and, like, the abuses going on, you know, within that and then, like, control of women as well. But women found something to, because it was predominantly women that were practicing witchcraft because a man would technically be considered a warlock doesn't really matter you can identify as either but back then a woman was witchcraft and in my opinion it was like women were becoming empowered from a time where they had been known to walk in their husband's shadow and it was like society was like oh we gotta shut this down we can't let these women get empowered we gotta shut this down immediately and you know you're talking about using potions and oils and leaves really right. really like that's really all you're using you know but like it can also create hysteria fear i do see that side of it of like oh someone's gonna hex me or curse me that's a different form of witchcraft but generally speaking i don't think it was that i just think they wanted to take you know the women empowering movement away of like coven right think of the word coven which is like a group of women together who are practicing witchcraft and they were they you, they don't want you to be together to empower each other. They want to take that control back. What do you think about a cat? They do. I, I <coughs> know, uh, there's strength in numbers, mm -hmm. and I think that mm -hmm. men instinctively know even now how powerful we are mm -hmm. as individuals. Mm -hmm. You know, and imagine that magnified by like ten strong women in a group. And I think that's why there was such a stigma for so long that women needed to stay home. Mm -hmm. How could they? How could they cultivate friendships with other women if they were forced to be home? Mm -hmm. I you agree. Can't. Mm -hmm. Like it was all for a reason for them to be the alpha male or the dominating whatever. And unfortunately, like a lot of people fell for that because there was a lot of fear with that. Well, the other side of the fear is like when paganism broke off and became a thing, which is I would say more of 18th, 19th century. The reason. Um, so now I've said this before, not all witches are pagan, all pagans are witches, okay? So make sure you get that distinction down. Mostly, in my opinion, the people that took on the name pagan is because the persecution of the title witch. They do not want to have the title of witch because of society. Um, now, when witch hunts started, like way back in the day, and I'm not talking Salem, I'm talking European witch hunts. They truly believed that they followed Satan to trade souls for his assistance and that those witches summoned demons to accomplish black magic deeds. Now, I'm not saying all do that, and I'm not saying all don't do that, 
but I'm saying that they used the power of fear to scare people who didn't practice witchcraft to be like, oh God, like I don't want a witch in my parish or like little community, whatever. They might be working for Satan. And they, you know, then you go into things like, <clears throat> which Kat and I are going to go into a bigger conversation about this at the end of the month. So this is a really good introduction comparing religion to paganism to even Christianity and to witchcraft. Um, they say black magic or witchcraft is the only ones or practices that do animal sacrifices. That's not true. I mean, if you go back to Christianity, Catholicism times, older, I mean, actually, witchcraft is probably one of the most original belief systems of the world. And then it's been taken and reinterpreted through different religions, and that includes Christianity and even parts of Catholicism, such as celebrating Christmas with a tree. That's actually considered a Yule tree, which is originated in... If you put up a Christmas tree, guess what? You practice witchcraft. Do you blow out candles on your birthday? Guess what? That's witchcraft. Do you think that, I don't know, a symbolism of a black cat is bad luck? Guess what? That's witchcraft. Do you have paranoias? Like, I have a paranoia. I don't like fake keys. I had a key necklace. I used to be obsessed with key necklaces. Yes. Superstitions. Do you believe in superstitions? Guess what? That's witchcraft. And it's been... It, yep. Anything. Literally. You could do... Do you think that if you stir your coffee, like, for good luck one way, or bad luck another, or, like... Don't go under certain, you know, doorways because it's bad luck or, like, stop before you go over a bridge or stop before you go over train tracks. Guess what? That's all witchcraft, people. It's all witchcraft. It's just been reinterpreted in different ways, and people don't realize it, and that's what makes your brain, like, go, because you're just like, why are you so afraid of witchcraft when you practice your birthday with candles? Like, it makes no sense. Um, do you want a tangent on that at all? Oh, one more thing. They, they believed, this is funny though, they believed that another reason they didn't like witches is that they would not only double worship, but they would have secret meetings and orgies, and they would take your husband from you. Well, yeah, it's a good thing we didn't go to OnlyFans then, you know what I'm saying? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh my tangent, take it and go, I want you to go. Talk about the sorcery, you know what I'm saying? It's just a little, I don't know, hypocritical to sit, you know, to just think that anything like that is dark. Because I feel like if you're a Catholic, I was born raised Catholic, but that's not where I'm at now, okay? We're not there. <laughs> um, we are not there. Sorry, right, I can't. We're not even going to go there. I actually saw something the other day that was like, if you know the song Oceans by Hillsong, you're now a witch. <laughs> like, literally, like, I was hilarious. My anyway, cat. I was like, wow, the trauma is here now. Thank you. Um, but, you know, even people that are of high authority or the Pope or people of high religious stature, and with intention, they could also be doing some side devil work. Like, who knows? You know what I mean? Like, nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. And I feel like witchcraft in general uh, embodies authenticity mm -hmm. to the max doing what you love and having the freedom to be able to choose what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And there's beauty in that. That's just truth. And I feel like anything outside of what's in the book um, is just seen as um, evil, the mm -hmm. devil, you know, mm -hmm. because that's all they know, you mm -hmm. know, that's just very narrow minded. Like that's just how they were brought up and okay, fine. But don't push that on somebody else that might not believe in that or let alone hang them <clears throat> for witchcraft or burn you know them I mean? alive my god or let's get even alive, more yeah drown them which by the way that makes no sense to me mm. if you if you die you were actually not a witch but if you float you're a witch I, that makes no sense to me it's so just... out and out of all those people did anyone float or uh, no they didn't because you're not going to float because you're in a human vessel yeah and so now you killed someone that's great good talk Chat, uh. forgot about that one 
Well, now someone someone just said I trust a witch way more than a priest. No, I'm not gonna say that either, because I I'm I have you know there's a balance. You gotta have a balance, man. Like, I love Archangel stuff. I love Saint Michael stuff. Cat has a very amazing. Is he a priest or a father? He's a father. He's a, a father. Yep, he's a father. Father Christian, um, who was a monk for 13 years. And you love him, and he's your he he love him like he's a family member too. Like you may not practice Catholicism, but you still have you know areas of religion in your life. And I feel like the point of it is is taking things that work for you and resonate with you without mm-hmm. allowing something take you over with the state of fear if that makes it's sense true. which is yeah. why i don't go to church you know on sundays because now cat does but she sings so she's getting paid it's for it's so a different thing but <laughs> that, oh my god i'm screaming no but you do it's true though you appreciate what you want to take out of it It, that's okay you're not gonna sit there and let people put you in purgatory either by saying cat on social media you talk about being a green witch yet you're gonna go to church on sundays and pray to god you better pray for forgiveness you know what i mean like you wouldn't tolerate that which is also coming in with boundaries right one hundred percent, and intention. You know, mm-hmm. there are even out there. Um, there are actually a lot of people on TikTok that consider themselves Christian witches. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. And, um, it, yeah, and it's just very like it's just open-minded. No mm-hmm. one's judging them for what they're doing. You mm-hmm. know, so why feel the need to do that to others? And I feel like you bringing up Father Christian was a really great point because um, I started out ca- Catholic, but he's like an Anglican priest, <clears throat> and he, which is pretty much Catholic, it still follows the Roman diocese whatever um but he you know was really devout like took a vow of silence for 13 years and was very is very aware of what i'm doing mm-hmm. very aware oh he is transparency i've been <clears throat> in the high mm-hmm. and you know what he did you know he gave me blessed saint michael objects to take with me to locations mm-hmm. but he and loves he- horror now wait a second he does he you does. need to share the whole story here, okay? okay I'll share the whole story, yes. Because this so, father has been a part of Kat's life since she was actually born. And he, he comes to Kat's house for, like, dinner sometimes. And he'll actually want to, he'll request to watch paranormal or horror movies. And this man has done actual exorcisms on people, right? Like, yeah. And it's so crazy because, like, his personality outside of the, at the church is really different than, like, how he is in it. And, um... You know, obviously, when he's in church, I'm telling you, from when I was younger and, and watched him, mm-hmm. he goes into, like, a trance-like state. Hmm. And I think I just had, like, major respect for that, even, like, take God out of it. I just had really, res- like, big respect for the fact that he was, like, really in his rituals, <clears throat> just in general, you know? And But outside of that, yeah, he's very big into, like, watching The Exorcist. Like, Christmas time, he'll come over for Christmas, and he's like, all right, we need to watch Krampus. That's our, that's literally the, our, our tradition every year is to watch Krampus. Uh-huh. It's so, so bizarre. So I don't have a very, like, your typical whatever situation. Mm-hmm. But it's possible. Everyone's just so dang uptight. Everyone mm-hmm. just needs to breathe, okay? Yeah. Well, okay, Nikita asked one thing. She said, so if blowing out birthday candles is considered witchcraft, could certain routines also be considered witchcraft? Of, of course. Oh. If you're if you're superstitious <laughs> of putting your socks on before your pants, that's witchcraft, boo. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you have to put your left shoe on before your right, that's also witchcraft, boo. Like, literally, yeah, it's all, like, but the thing is, is that, like, w- we need to, like, roll it back to a time when witchcraft was the only religion on the earth because that was a time of it existed. Yes. Like, before Catholicism, before Christianity, there was a time the only belief system was witchcraft. So if you were living in that time, and I'm not talking when the witch trials go on, I'm not talking when the witch hunts were happening, would you then be ashamed to be like, oh, girl, I tripped down this ravine one day, I fell in a river, and after that, I'll never put my right shoe on before my left. Would you be afraid to say, yes, I practiced witchcraft at that time? No, because everybody to this day still practices witchcraft. You you, you celebrate Easter, that's also witchcraft, like literally. Sarah. It is. You celebrate Valentine's Day, that's Lupercalia. That's also witchcraft. Like, everything we celebrate in the United States is actual witchcraft. (laughs) And for for us to sit here and have to study the Salem witch trials of people getting persecuted and murdered 
for what we're still practicing today makes no fucking sense, okay? God, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just so the irony. The irony, okay? It's sick. The point of this that we're trying to make, and I hope it's very clear, which is... <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> witchcraft isn't a big deal like god it's not i mean like okay it's a big deal if you're sacrificing animals i mean like elfie has said elfie is um you know she is vegan however she says there are still some societies that practice sacrifices sure right i'm not one of those societies personally okay i don't sacrifice things i think that's gross i think i would freak out on somebody if they did do something because i in my, I have my Native, but that's my belief system being a Native American, which is, as a Native American, you respect all things that are living, everything that's living, and that includes a plant. You res it's also the empath in me. You respect the plant. You respect everything about life, life in general. So do I agree with sacrifices? No. Do people still do it to this day? Yeah. Do people in black magic do it? Yeah. And, and, and yeah. others, not not Dutch, just black magic, hoodoo, voodoo, uh, even witchcraft, I'm sure they can interpret that. I don't agree with it. I mean, the point of this conversation is there is light and dark in everything we do. At any moment, anybody could take anything they have learned and turn it to the dark side. No matter what it is, it could go to the dark side. And it's not fair for, what was it, like 19 people that were hung? How many people were hung? Um, there were, I think it was eight, or 12, excuse me, I think it was 12, but a total of like 18 died or something. Yeah, tw uh, oh, excuse me. 22 um, are on this list, and then there was three that were pardoned. So there's, okay. Bri there's Bridget Bishop, Rebecca Nurse, Sarah Good, Elizabeth Howe, Susan Mar uh, Martin, Sarah Wilds, George Boroas, is that how you say it? Giles, which is who you brought up, Giles Corey. Mm -hmm. George James Sr., Martha Carrier, John Proctor, John Williard, Martha Corey, Martha Eatsy, Mary Parker, Alice Parker, mm -hmm. Anne Poudreur, Wilmot mm -hmm. Reed, Margaret Scott, and Samuel Wardwell Sr. And then Anne Foster, Sarah Osborne died in prison, and three that were pardoned were Abigail Faulkner, Dorcas, there's a Dorcas? No wonder they, na so that's where they got the name in Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Yep. Yep, yep. There was also a Prudence as well. Uh, I believe it was like the middle name of one of the people that wrote a letter out Sh to their family. Chanel was and our Dorcas. Yeah, yeah, yes. And then Elizabeth Proctor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, 20, so yeah, 25 people died then. 19 were hung at Proctor's Ledge, mm -hmm. and then 5 died in jail, and then Giles was pressed to death. What is wrong with everybody? Everything. Everything's wrong. And people are still sitting around buying Christmas trees, putting a star on your Yule tree. This world makes me sick. I feel like Bette Midler in Hocus Pocus. Um, you know, it's just so backwards. Oh, wait, we have a lot of comments here. Um, so talk about Giles for a minute. So he had the most amount of land. He was one of the last that was murdered, pressed to death. And he's yes. the one that brought everybody up, like, having hysteria because they were saying, this isn't right. Giles owned all this land in Massachusetts, and you only killed him and pressed him to death and tortured him to take his land from him, right? Yep. I actually have a friend um, who has relation with Giles directly, um, you know, so he's really, like, open about talking about him. But Giles had a really interesting, like, path in Salem just because he was just that guy that worked really hard, had some money owned a lot of, of land in Salem, Danvers, and um, just wanted to be left alone. Honestly. Him mm -hmm. and his wife just wanted to be left alone. And uh, I believe someone accused his wife of witchcraft. Hmm. I don't know if she died or not in jail or if she was hung. I can't remember off the top <clears throat> of my head. But he was sick of it. Hmm. And he was voicing that at every trial. Mm -hmm. Every trial. Uh, he couldn't walk well. He was a grump. And I mean... Being as old as he was at the time was old, you know, early 70s is old mm -hmm. and back then. Um, you know, he willingly took death. Hmm. And and I think instinctively he knew that was going to be the end of it. Right. Because he was really well known. Even though people were pissy with him, people knew something was funny 
you know, because then the word started getting out, like, who's going to have his land? <clears throat> right. It's not right. It, no, it's not right. It's mm -hmm. sick. This mm -hmm. shouldn't have even been a thing to begin with, you know? So now let's fast forward. You have all these people that have died. And now we're at a point where we're 200 years past and no one knows exactly where Gallows Hill is, which is the location of where the hangings took place. Cat, why did it take 200 years to find Gallows Hill? <laughs> so they had some suspicions as to where it was. So it's interesting because I believe they have they found recently the trenches. And that's how they were able to validate Gallows Hill. Gallows Hill was on some random hillside. It's actually like in someone's like fenced up area behind their house. Okay, so like that poor family that didn't know. Why do we have Hill. so much paranormal activity in our house, George? I have no idea what's going on. Everything's I getting moved. Go to that house. I want to go to the house, mm -hmm. but um, there was no like specific spot where you could see it. Like it wasn't a place where you could see it clearly. Mm -hmm. And there was a club at a local school um, that was trying to, you know, figure out where Gallows Hill was or mm -hmm. where the trenches were. Cause there was Gallows Hill and then there was like a shallow part in the ground where they would like roll the bodies into this hole and just like leave them there. No, this is like a university, right? In mass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So in and, this university, um, there is a club that's like a, Probably like an um, artifact club, maybe historical they historical, design. and yeah. they decide what we're gonna do is we're gonna find all of the paperwork from the witch trials, and we're gonna go through it piece by piece. Mm -hmm. Bless their hearts, because that's all handwritten, and you probably couldn't even read it because it's also scripture cursive, teeny cursive court documents, right? And they go mm -hmm. through it piece by piece, and then what happens? <laughs> so they, they tracked it down to one letter. It was one letter um, by this girl who was actually leaving in a carriage um, to go back to her home. She went to go and visit Danvers, Salem, mm -hmm. um, just on a holiday and then to come back. And she, she was talking in the letter about a smell and about like a grotesque like area in a hillside where, you know, some trials were occurring. It was very cryptic, mm -hmm. um, and I think she was trying to keep it that way if it was going to be read by someone, so to, like, not startle them, you know, because that stuff was not talked about at that, at that time. And um, it would not shock me because what they would do in the trenches is they would roll the body down, and then the families of those people that were hung would go and give them a burial because it was against the church to bury a witch on a property. So they, they tracked it back through all of those let all of those letters down to one and figured out where the trenches were based off of her description of trees and um, hillside. So it had and nothing like, to do with the government trying to hide the fact that where these people were hung, right? It had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. It just had to do with the no. fact that in scripture, it was only in one place. The location was marked in one letter. And the only way to find that in a needle in a haystack was to do exactly what this university club did, was go through each paper piece by piece. Yeah, and, you know, I think that they talked about Gallows Hill a lot. There's a lot of artist depictions of Gallows Hill. Obviously, this was back in 16, late 1600s, so the area might have looked different than where it's at now. It's very overgrown and crowded now. Um, but I think instinctively these people knew what they were doing and they did not want it on paper mm -hmm. they were just gonna put it in the middle of the woods somewhere kill these innocent people and roll them in a hole <laughs> that's so you know, messed oh my god so messed i will like, say yes. though there had to have been some bad karma that came back like talk about witchcraft from the universe boo oh i i, <coughs> I actually made a youtube video like last a couple months ago now maybe last month talking about judge jonathan corwin because there was there is still to this day thoughts that there was a curse put on the witch house mm -hmm. because after it was shortly after it was like six or so months after the witch trials he decided to leave his like entire family died all of his kids died mm. 
after this was like ended and it, that would not shock me at all okay well nikita said what would have happened if the women were all black during that time laugh out loud and caffeinated christy said oh my god the goths wouldn't have survived the goths and the ravers would be the first to get executed <laughs> okay cat's got that tattoo of a tree on her arm they'd be like witchcraft <laughs> witchcraft it's a hobbit hole my black lipstick crystal witchcraft she's being hung Literally. It's true. I mean, oh, there were just so many webs of fear for women during that time. It's so ugly. It's <laughs> so ugly. A, uh, may you all world. that persecuted burn in hell. Anyways, continue. Literally. Carry on. Yeah. Oh, there is also there is a Gallows Hill memorial that they did put up a while ago, just as like a placement for mm. where because they at the time they didn't know where Gallows Hill was specifically. And it is within um, the commons of Salem, Massachusetts, and it's really, um, that's the one place that's really sad. The energy does feel very at peace. I think everybody there um, that passed on from that scenario and situation um, are now at peace because people have been pardoned. They And they, by the way, they weren't officially pardoned until like early 2000s, I'd like to add, from the trials. <sighs> so... Uh, that was messed up, but every time I go there, there are always fle fresh, you I just said flesh flowers. <laughs> There's flesh, flesh flowers if you're ever interested. Flowers. Check yeah. out the flesh flowers. They're the best. <laughs> but on all of the um, 19 headstones of the 19 people that were hung, there are, um, I almost said it again, flesh flowers. <laughs> okay, wait a second. This is another thing I, I think you should address just because you've been there freaking 400 times and I hate you because okay. I was supposed to be there in May. I was supposed to be there last May. And COVID killed my dreams of, of being in Salem, okay? Um, you have also said this along with other people that I know that you know, know Salem, Massachusetts quite familiar right okay there are people that respect and um have the right to reserve to carry on the witchy traditions and mm -hmm. that includes witchy restaurants and witchy uh stores and the and the sidewalks are witchy but then now there's another dark side to this too right now you have to be careful with what kind of stores you go just walking in in salem oh my god right yeah so do, why don't you share that seriously because I, I think people need to be well aware energetically like don't just expect to walk into salem and think everybody's warm welcoming you because once again we're going back to the light and dark balance here you're gonna find balance of good and you're gonna find balance of bad so if you are an energy reader which i assume if you're into paranormal and you hear you are pay the f attention to when you're walking in a store in salem so carry on, yeah. Kat. Go ahead. Be really mindful. Um, uh, there's a lot of beautiful souls that are there that are practitioners, um, witchcraft practitioners, um, and really beautiful. Coven's Cottage, definitely recommend. Owned by a generation of witches, and it's gorgeous in there, but it's extremely energetic, like powerful energy in there. Powerful, but beautiful. Um, but there is one place. And they, I can't even really remember the name, which is good. I think it's something Which is store. good. <laughs> I can't remember what it is. All it's right. good. I can't um, remember. I, I would like to add, not that this really, like, means anything, but there is a Church of Salem, uh, Church of Satan in Salem. I was like, there's a Church of Salem? Let's go. Church of Salem. Let's just start the comment. Oh, we should do that. Oh, let's do oh, it. Oh, let's go start. That. Yeah. We could be, like, okay. chilling adventures of Sabrina without the sacrifices. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, <laughs> fine. Just all the flowers and the craft. You mean the, the fresh, the flesh flowers? The flesh. <laughs> it's been a long life, okay? It's been a long life. Um, so I went into this one bookstore, gift shop type of thing, and there were two guys behind the counter. And you meet a, a, a lot of people from a lot of eclectic backgrounds, which is fine. Not knocking that. <clears throat> Um, but I do knock the warlocks that own that building uh, because they were extremely um, forward. You I guess need is the best you need to it. watch your surroundings. I, like I, I go with a friend. You need to never go alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I told a friend about that that shop that had 
been to Salem in a while, um, and they never went into the store, and I told her my, my situation, and she wanted to go in, despite me what I told her, and I said, I am not going with you. So you go by yourself with the stuff I told you, and you tell me how you feel. She was in and out within less than a minute and told me she thought she was going to throw up. <laughs> right? So I'm just saying, I'm just throwing that out there. Okay, now um, being mindful, though, of the situation, this particular store, Kat has told me about it several times. <clears throat> This is the good and bad of things, and sometimes people decide to do harm to you when you may not know it. And this particular store, they have mirrors that are facing each other, which creates portals. Yes. And you have to walk through an area where the mirrors are all facing each other in order to get through the store. So that's what I'm saying when you need to pay attention to your surroundings, because mm -hmm. They're, if they're doing black magic or dark magic, doesn't even have to be black magic. It can just be dark magic or, or Satanism. Who knows? Luciferianism. You don't know. And now they have amplifying things in there, such as high EMFs mixed with mirror, large mirrors facing each other. That's why you have to pay attention to your surroundings because now you yeah. have this sort of huge um, battery, essentially, in the store that is magnifying the witchcraft that they're doing. And if you don't pay attention to that and you're in there too long, that's when you're susceptible to attachments. You're susceptible, susceptible to getting sick. Like she said, her friend walked out and almost threw up. So you need to pay attention to your surroundings, not in a sense of if there's a guy that's following you and walking up behind you, pay attention to that too. But I'm talking energetically and speaking from a magic stance if you're familiar with things on the channel that I've educated you guys on like setting up portals through mirrors pay attention to that pay attention yeah just to give like a quick overview of what happened there are these two brothers that are warlocks that own the store they saw me immediately as a woman um, and they were really pushing me to go to the back of the building they'd asked me if I'd like been in the store before I said no and the front part of it's pretty you know it has your typical like tarot cards witchy stuff okay as you start to go back there was the satanist section so they had like all satanist like merch satanic merch now do like all that. stores have satanic sections no there's i think there's only about two or three stores that i know of that do but the energy in those other ones aren't Good. Yeah, they're just there to be inclusive because of the Church of Satan that's in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know the you will know the difference when you walk in. Um, but he kept trying to push me further, and I was trying to leave, but both of the brothers were at either end of the store. Okay. At this point, I had my friend with me and um, from Indiana, and he immediately looked at me and was like, there's something wrong here. Because they're, where they were trying to push me was the back corner of the room where it had all of these ancient Egyptian statues, which, by the way, were beautiful because I love ancient Egypt. Um, but there were two mirrors on the floor at the base of this open door. Mm -hmm. And I said, I refuse to go near those mirrors. There was, so there was something wrong. There was something <clears throat> wrong there. And I just ran out of there. I ran out of there. I will never go back again. Right. Never. I want to go back. I think I'm going to be going back in a few weeks. So I'll have to take a picture of the building to show you guys. Um, so you guys are just aware. Mm -hmm. And then you make your own judgment call. Yeah. So... Either Crazy. go in and burn with Satan or don't. It's really up to you. <laughs> don't go in that back room. Um, if you go in there, do not go in that back room. I'm telling you. It's not good. It's bad news bears. They probably have flesh flowers back there, okay? I love that. <laughs> flesh flowers? Why am I laughing? It's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Okay, we need, to, we need to revise our discussion to Ghost Adventures now. Okay. <clears throat> because okay. I feel like we've made a very clear point at this point. <laughs> That there is white and dark and, and balance in everything that you do, and there shouldn't be extremes to any side of it. You know what I mean? No. Which, by the way, being the host of Ghost Girl Diaries for the last 10 years, I can't tell you how many Bible thumper messages I've gotten <laughs> from people <laughs> that are like, you're going to go to hell. And I'm like, girl, I've already been there. Do you want to come with me? Come on no, down. No, let's go. I have, a, I have a seat for you saved, you know? No, but, and, but once again, with balance, like, I don't shove my beliefs down people's throat, and I expect the same in return. You know what I mean? And just because I'm investigating paranormal um, doesn't mean I'm, I'm a Satan worshiper, you know? Just because I want to change my last name to Morningstar doesn't mean I'm a Luciferian, okay? 
I <laughs> just love kidding. that though. It's pretty. Um, I do like Morning Star. Isn't that pretty? It's pretty. It has nothing to do with Lucifer. Anyway. No. Um, s- someone said people act weird in retail in mass question mark. So th- I guess I guess they're shocked <laughs> yeah. that you said that that exists. Uh, that's yeah. it's true though, right? I mean, and that's not the only one. Mm 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 mm. No. But you get a sense, and like when you're in there, I would say give yourself like an hour to walk around the commons, because it does go down um, either side of the streets, um, and just get a feel for it. You're going to know where you're going to walk into and where you're not, Mm -hmm. and just trust that gut instinct. That's it. Listen to your gut, and Mm -hmm. I I think you do that anywhere, you know, like, Mm -hmm. or you should. Mm -hmm. If you're not, stop ignoring your higher self, or you're going to get hit in the face really hard, okay? (laughs) Um, Ghost Adventures. You want to start this one? I don't really know where to start. Um, you called, well, you called me. Yep. <laughs> okay, so uh, say okay. say the word, but brew because I keep saying it wrong. Okay, brujeria. Yes. Is what it's called. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Crystal called me actually. She had like a creepy psychic moment, but it was just like really creepy. Psychic. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, you do it too. Shut up. You do it too. The other day, she <laughs> calls me. She's like, I have a message from your guides. Don't shoot the messenger. Okay, I just have something to tell you. <laughs> So I called her one day about, what, a month ago? And I said, you know, I don't know why I'm telling you to say that, or t- telling you to do this, but I said, I'm telling you that, um, you know, Kat is Hispanic. She has Mexican on her father's side and Spanish on her uh, father, father's other side, right? And then mm-hmm. on her mom's side, she's Irish, so she has a really good mixture. And I said, I don't know why I'm telling you to, to do this, but I, it must be a message from your guides that you need to start practicing brujeria is that correct Mm -hmm. i said it right perfect Mm -hmm. and i think that you need to tap into that because of your your culture and heritage and kat was like that's weird because i've thought about it but now that i feel like you're giving me this extra boost i feel like that's a sign from the universe and i've already started researching it so as kat as you guys know kat has been a practicing green witch for a long time she's very open about her practices and she's giving herself an extra boost with her um, her heritage which is much like me with my Native American spiritual side, right? And it's all about ancestral work, good vibes, energy, healing, drawing things to you, the universe, the practice of the secret, the law of attraction, and incorporating that. Now, I can't say I haven't put a couple people in a jar once or twice, you know what I'm saying? Freezing spells are great. Yeah, sometimes if you need a boundary, you just got to put them in a jar. And I've done it a few times, you know. They have to do something bad to you first. But I've used a jar spell here and there, okay? I'm not going to lie. I also may or may not have had someone practicing witchcraft in my house with dark magic and dark oils that I found after they were gone, which that made me really scared. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, That's for another stream. (laughs) That's another stream that I don't have time for today. Um, I had to get religious prayer and holy candles for that one. But anyways, we'll go back to the regular stream with ghost adventures. Um, (laughs) So um, you took this information. She's been studying it. She loves it. She, She thinks that it's what she wants to dive into. Now, pause that idea. So that was like a month ago. Ghost Adventures came out with a brujaria episode okay Mm -hmm. i i had started to watch the episode didn't get back to it cat was like oh let me know how it is and then i'll watch it if i need to i finally bit the bullet and i watched it the other night so this is going to be like a miniature ghost adventures review okay well i i saw the title of it being the same thing what did you hear that no what whoa that was like a low male voice that came through your mic what did it say did anyone else hear that it was just like meh it just sounded like a really low wow that was okay i'm not crazy let me know in the chat if you heard that that was really loud anyway it's, a, it's offensive you know i'm sorry it's probably a brujo it's not a you <laughs> stop catch <laughs> your ancestor oh yeah well, it's probably like my native ancestors like no don't mess totally with this cool. yeah pretty much <laughs> um it better not be Ed Gein, because every time I bring up his name, oh. he pops up in my house, and I'm just not having it today, you know what I'm saying? No. <sighs> Anyways, um, so, going, <laughs> what? <laughs> He's unclean. You are an unclean spirit. I, I request oh. to rid you from my home. Okay. Some rosemary. Oh, I need a lot more than that, you know what I'm saying? True. 
So um, I watched the episode. This was like, what, two days ago. I tell Kat, I'm like, oh my God, you know, I have a problem with this episode. <laughs> but then again, I always have a problem with the episodes because, you know, and, and you know, Ghost Adventures has been going, you know, they're on like 24 seasons or something ridiculous like that. Like, Jesus Lord. It's whack. <laughs> okay, people what? are saying they heard it too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Someone said maybe it was Zach's spirit when he heard the review. Probably. I mean, you know. anything's possible, okay? Yeah, pretty much. We're talking about witchcraft, anything's possible. Okay, so I watched the episode and I was like, I don't know if you guys have seen this episode. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen this episode, then don't listen to the review because you're not going to like it. <laughs> so he immediately starts to say, Brujaria. He starts to Google it. And he says that it's all surrounding voodoo dolls and black magic. And then he gets this, like, dark witch on there that's called the Hood Witch. I don't know where she came from, but she has, like, 500,000 followers on social media. I was like, damn, why don't I have that many followers? I'm not a Hood Witch, you know what I'm saying? And anyway, um, talking about how dark a brujaria is, which is your heritage, what you've been studying, I feel like... If there is anybody that has the right to talk about this and the proper way it is Kat, and I get on the phone with Kat immediately, I'm like, oh my god, you've got to like watch this episode because I think you're going to not like it. Because <laughs> I think you're going to have a problem, okay? Yeah. And, and yeah. Kat's knowledgeable on it, and she's Mexican, and she's Spanish, so she has two sides of it, from the Spain side and the Mexico side, and I'm like, this needs to be a conversation that Kat and I have, because once again... As we know, Ghost Adventures is always about demons and darkness, and we're going to defeat the demons, and we're going to punch a demon in the face, and I'm going to take him out with my brujaria spells. So, so we need we need to start this conversation. So, where do you want to start with this, Kat? Let's start from the beginning. Okay. We're going to start from the beginning. I feel like Sound of Music, do re me here, but with witchcraft. Do okay, it up. So, brujaria is literally just Spanish witchcraft okay if you are a female practicing witch you would be called a bruja and if you are a male you'd be called a brujo um and it was created in the early 1500s um and it exists in um, latin america and um, afro-caribbean culture so just right off the bat bru brujeria is also a mixture of um, indigenous roots with catholicism and this is when it started to stir up some problems within the um, Latin American and Afro-Caribbean culture community. Um, it was really frowned upon and uh, considered dark and worshiping the devil. So pretty much anything, any type of witchcraft is gonna be labeled as such if you have any type of, you know, Jesus roots, okay? Just, just plain and simple, okay? I, it's, just, it's just how it is, okay? Oh my God, um, I, that's like the most authentic laugh I've had in like a really long time. <laughs> Jesus. In other words, because the, the reason I laugh at it is because people are hiding behind religion and hiding behind the name of Jesus. Essentially, mm -hmm. they're saying you cannot believe in Jesus or God if you're practice if you're a brujeria. Why? Yep. Why? Right. I like yep. Jesus. I like Christmas. I put up my Salem tree. You know, <laughs> my Yule, Yule tree. tree. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I'm sorry. Exactly. It's okay. So, you know, brujeria, uh, a, a major part of it, actually, um, talking about it with, like, some of my family, um, really has to do more with, like, the green craft. So I found that really interesting, like, kind of already practicing that in my own day-to-day, -day, um, that it, a major part of it deals with ailments. And um, so, Okay, so time out. For, I just want to get this straight. So what you're saying is... Brujaria, depending on the background heritage, so depending on Mexico, depending on Spain, depending on Haiti, Haitian, depending on Cuban, depending on any Caribbean areas, the, the Dominican Republic, you're saying it's all practice in the eyes of different cultures, but it is called the same thing. Is that what you're saying? So it just yep. depends on where you're from. So it's it's like religion. It's like 
if you're Christian here in Rome, you're, you're, you have Catholicism. And it all stems back to virtually somewhat of the same thing. It's just spurted out in different branches is what you're saying. It does. And the branches that get confused, and this is why when I watched it and called Crystal back, I was like, this would be a really great conversation to clear up because mm -hmm. brujeria does get a bad rap, but it's literally just witchcraft in mm -hmm. Spanish. <laughs> That's literally what it is. Um, at all, so brujeria is one of the branches. Um, the other branch is santeria, which was, is from Cuba again. And then the other branch is Haitian hoodoo voodoo. Okay. They were, all three of these branches were created under <coughs> the, like Cuban umbrella. Okay. They all kind of broke off, did their own thing. The thing that gets mixed up with brujeria a lot, especially with the darker side of, of the magic in general, is brujeria and santeria are confused. Santeria, they work with deities. Mm -hmm. um, they do do animal sacrifices. Can you explain um, what the deities are? Can you just briefly? Yeah, so um, these deities are, so it's actually really interesting <clears throat> because the word santeria in Spanish translates to uh, the way of the saints. Mm -hmm. So they, their deities are very much like the ones that um, if you worship deities in, in the witchcraft community, it'd be like um, Hecate, mm -hmm. um, Loki, Thor, like our deities. You mean I can worship Thor? Them. Can I worship, like, what's his name? Loki? What? No, not Loki. Which one? What's the actor? Chris Hemsworth? Oh, gosh, I wish. I mean, I'll worship him if we're under the name of Bruja Aria. Pretty much already <laughs> him, okay? Just saying. Anyways, sorry. I take a sip of water. You said Thor, and I got a little distracted. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay. Carry yeah. on. So, um, I don't know necessarily, like, the exact names of the deities because I don't work with deities personally, mm -hmm. um, but they, they work with deities, so they do a lot of rituals, and they do do sacrifices on the light and dark side, okay? Mm -hmm. um, Brujeria does not work with deities. They are their own, on their own path, and but within spell work, they work with their ancestors to help channel their path or to help channel the spell work. Ancestors are huge in brujeria, um, especially Mexican culture with Dia de los Muertos, which, by the way, came from Cuba. That was a very huge thing. And then, it, you know, the Latin, whole Latin community picked it up. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just really interesting because um, they also do, so in brujeria, they do something called lempia. And it's what's known as a cleansing ritual or a sweeping ritual with rosemary and other like cleansing herbs um, to like cleanse a person's body of residual negative energy. And Santeria has very similar things, but it has to do with blood. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's like they mix the two. They mix the two. And I was telling Crystal this earlier. There's any scenario could happen. Mm -hmm. Someone could be practicing brujeria as white magic and get mad and create a voodoo doll, Haitian voodoo in the same room that's a you know mood. what i mean like it could be it depends on the situation but that doesn't mean <clears throat> brujeria as a whole is black magic or dark so are magic. you saying that in the ghost adventures episode we may have gotten it mixed up and, and gotten it mixed up with santeria i think so i i think especially hearing um what, what her name's brie or the hood witch or whatever she's called um she's definitely on the darker side which is fine to each their own mm -hmm. um but she was more talking on the darker side because that's how it was being portrayed to her from zach right um there was also a moment in it just as a spoiler alert where they were saying in the basement there was some dark energy that was happening and someone died and their ash they found their ashes in a container on the floor with a bunch of candles around it and a picture of the person that died and they were trying to make it seem like there was some dark ritual happening with these ashes. Um, but the so wait, now ashes, are we saying, are they actual human ashes? Like of the person that died, okay. yeah. They, they had them in like the jar. Um, now in, in Brujeria, is that normal? Yeah, ancestry work is very normal. Mm -hmm. um, and now are those ashes being abused? Or is it in the case of protection by the ancestors when you're doing spell work? I would say protected, and the only reason is this. They're really clear in, in the video with the color correspondence that they were putting in the episode. Mm -hmm. It was white candles that were surrounding the ashes with the picture of the deceased loved one. To me, immediately, and especially with the deep cultural roots, Latin American roots of brujeria, that immediately means to me they were just respecting them, worshiping them. 
-hmm. making sure that they were okay, especially if it was a recent, recent, you know, situation or they had just gotten the ashes and they were letting the white candles burn down so they could see this realm and enter in so they can talk with their loved ones. You know? Wait, okay. I want you to repeat that again. I want you to repeat that again for anybody that missed it. Mm -hmm. They were Which lighting part? the candles so that they could see the other realm so that they walk through and make sure that they get to the other side. And they'll leave them like that. So when they said that there was candle wax everywhere and they were all weirded out, like the practitioner will open that door for them to say like, uncle or someone like come through, I'm here. You know, I'm gonna leave the light on for you and I'm gonna go to bed. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much what it is. In a safe space, safe fire, fire safe. But um, you know, they were also mixed up because there was a voodoo doll there or someone dark was practicing like the dark aspect of brujeria, which might've been more santeria than brujeria. Um, but they're both considered Spanish witchcraft. So that was kind of a broad term when they mentioned that in the episode in general where she she couldn't she didn't remember the word. Yeah, the I house. yeah. Okay, let's let's just talk about oh god. Um <laughs> the woman is on the couch and she's like mumbling and she's like blah, 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 blah. And like she's like having like a seizure. And she's like, I'm so scared. She's up at the corner. She's like, ah, like pointing up to the corner. And I'm like, are you okay, bitch? Do you need some water? Somebody get her a tea or something. She needs something to drink. She's afraid, right? Like, but once again, when you're doing this kind of spell work, they're calling on their ancestors to come through. Were they summoning in demons, cat? Not from the ashes standpoint, but they also weren't very clear as to what else was going on in the episode. To me, I felt like there was a missing link they weren't saying. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that was because they were riding on more her saying she was going to kill someone and the ashes downstairs and there was like a missing piece of information I felt mm -hmm. um, to kind of like pull it all together. But now if we're saying this is all dark and demons, why didn't they get more demonic activity when they were actually investigating? Yeah, there was not... There was not that much evidence, and honestly, the only piece of evidence they got was of the husband that passed on. And the door opened and closed, but it was it was like, I'm leaving, I'm going, guys, y'all, I don't know what y'all are doing upstairs, I'm going out this door. I feel like if they were going to be making, if this family was going to be making claims that this dark energy or demon or whatever um, killed this person's husband, there would have been some darker stuff happening. Now, they, now Zach was saying... Oh, did the demon follow them to the hotel? The mood. But I, that is a mood. But I don't know how accurate that would be because I feel like they would be calling someone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if there was dark, the way that they were panicking in their own home, I feel like they would be panicking that same way in their hotel, if that makes sense. No, but you is know? there, okay, so after you practice this and let's say you've invited, like they got the number 15 on the spirit box, right? They've invited 15, we're not going to call them demons, we're going to call them spirits. There's 15 spirits in the house, okay, because clearly it wasn't dark. Hmm. Y'all are just afraid of a bunch of ancestors, and you need to have the house blessed, and you need to sage, and you need to get them out. And that's just sort of it. You need to ask them to leave. I don't understand why people get so afraid if their house is haunted, why they can't take it on themselves. Just tell it to go. You're not hmm. allowed to be here, bitch. You don't pay rent. You can't stay in my hmm. house. It's true. But then you sit there in more fear and crying and you're upset. And these people are like, I don't know. I, I got summoned in here. I don't know how to get out. Can somebody help me get home? I'm yeah. stuck here. I came through the white light. They said, Uncle, leave the light on. I walked in and then the time I went to leave, the light was off. Where do I go? Like, literally. Like, you don't. It's not always scary and darkness. And I didn't sense the darkness at all in that episode. And I was really concerned. Okay, now back up again. The Hood Witch says a few things I don't agree with because I've done spell work with Cat and I know spell work. I don't practice as much as Cat, but I know spell work. Um, and like I said, I've done a few jar spells in my heyday, okay? Um, one, how do you feel about leaving three jars of pneumonia open for three days? Do you think that's healthy to be breathing in, whether that's a spell you found online or not? No. No, I feel like that would almost cause like brain like hallucinogens or something. You know what I mean? Like I feel like you would hallucinate after a period of time. Yeah, it I make it worse. The biggest thing I would like to say for the stream is please don't if you feel like you have an entity in the house or entities, the last thing you should be resorting to is putting pneumonia in jars and leaving it around your house. 
your animals might be able to get to it, children might be able to reach it, and I just don't think in general you should be smelling pneumonia. I think that was reckless for them to put that on the interview um, because I don't find it safe. She was literally like... Rambling? Water. She, yeah, she was like, get water and, and, ammonia, um, and ammonia and leave it there for three days. And yeah, I'm don't. Like, if these, first off, if these people are like really scared and going through stuff, I'm going to wait three days. Well, and, and if these people are really that, where's Bishop Brian? Seriously, whether he's real or not. No, but you know what I'm saying? You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'd rather have okay. Bishop Brian and what's her name? Sister Mary or something? Mother Teresa? Really? Mother know. Teresa. I don't know. Call in Mother Teresa, okay? I'd rather have them there than three jars of freaking pneumonia out where I'm dying. I have asthma. What do I do if I got asthma? I got the asthma, okay? Well, she even crazier is like the mom said she also had asthma. <laughs> and then, what? Like, in the interview, she's like, I have real asthma. I'm I screaming. Asthma, I couldn't breathe. And I'm like, this girl's telling people to put ammonia in their oh. house and leave it there for three days. Like, and then to drive, like, four oh, miles wait. from the home. Wait, like, can we address that? Because I was screaming, okay? Once again, practicing witchcraft here. Cat, raise your hand, okay? Both of us here, okay? Have you done jar work before? Yes. Of course you have, because it's fun. Let's put somebody in a jar. That doesn't mean you're putting bad magic on them. When you put someone or something in a jar, it means you're setting up a boundary. I don't want this person to talk to me ever again. Therefore, I'm going to put them in a jar and freeze it. Leave me alone forever, okay? Now, what you're supposed to do is take the jar very far from your home, okay? Don't bury it in your own land or you're setting the energy in your land, okay? You need to take it far away. Now, they made it look like they're driving through some, like, sandy mountains and they threw the jar out the window, okay? That's also not safe for a lot of reasons. One, you don't want an animal to get it, and if you're a practicing witch, brujeria, or of anything, you're still going to respect life. Do not just take a jar and throw it out the damn window. <laughs> An animal might eat it. You're also susceptible. Like, if what if there's insects on the ground that drink the pneumonia? Don't just get rid of the jar. Yeah, Go no. bury it and don't break it. What are you thinking? Just do a drive-by. Just start chucking them out the window. Like, <laughs> like egging people's houses. You just throw, like, spell jars. Jesus. You get a demon. And you get a demon. And you also get a demon. <laughs> Uh, all around. Yeah, I know. It's messed up. It was really messed up, and I just wasn't... I don't know. I, I also felt like the whole thing, kind of like what you had told me earlier today, Crystal, that mm -hmm. it felt very rushed. Like, her interview was probably, like, really last minute, and I felt like she was just kind of saying whatever she could to fit the aesthetic of, like, what Ghost Adventures is trying to portray, which she is was. fine. She was. She did but fit the aesthetic. Yeah, that's it's what they were... Fact. They were looking for somebody dark. They got somebody dark. And there's no disrespect to her. She has a lot of followers on social media. She definitely came off as a dark witch to me, personally. Mm -hmm. um, which is fine. Everybody to each their own. But I, I didn't agree with what she was saying because I know Kat's heritage. I know what she's been studying. And it was not matching up with what Kat was saying. And that was the concern that I had coming out. Yeah, it was weird. That was That was very... Strange. And yeah, I and, and I and I feel like if you're gonna teach people about spells like jar spells, then you better finish what you said because otherwise you're gonna have millions of people watch that episode, and they're gonna take they're gonna put an, a pneumonia out. They're gonna kill themselves breathing in the feet. What if you had a studio apartment and you have three jars of pneumonia in your studio? You're gonna die. You're not gonna make what if it. I die literally. Okay. Yeah, I just feel like when it comes to these shows, you guys. Don't believe everything as the, like, the word of God, no pun intended, um, literally, because I feel like jar spells, especially, or any type of spell, are going to be all done differently. It's mm -hmm. based off of circumstance, intention, and what you need in that moment, but I feel like at least she should have given the, just the clear basics, you know what I mean? Been really, very clear instead of being this like open-ended, dark... Go get rid of the jar. Okay, what if somebody drives down to their local Piggly right. Wiggly... And drops the jar off in the gas station, you know, parking lot in the trash can. Now either you have a haunted trash can or a haunted gas station. And that's not fair. 
to those owners? What did they do to deserve that demon? Nothing. Go out to the middle of nowhere and bury it. Get rid of it the right way, okay? True. And... Don't be a baby naive to... witch and throw it out the window, okay? Please don't do that. Like, really, don't do that. Please don't do that, ever. But <laughs> oh my to God. it to Salem witch trials, or to witch trials, Brujeria, um, being traced back to, like, the 1500s, um, in the early 1800s into the early 1900s, um, there were um, attacks put on people that practiced Brujeria. So it was almost like a witch trial in itself, but without it being named that, they were pretty much just trying to wipe everybody out without putting it anywhere, right. literally. Um, and, yeah, it's just messed up. It's really messed up. I feel like also with just, like, the Latin culture in general... There's a major line of like respect and disrespect when it comes to the craft as a whole, mm -hmm. because there's a deep family line with it. Same with normal <clears throat> witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Same with any type of, you know, anything. But when you're mixing in dark with with a craft of brujeria that's mainly light, there's a that's very um, it's misinformation, mm -hmm. and that that's when things can get dangerous. That's mm -hmm. when things can get dangerous. So I feel like. If they were going to do anything, they should have labeled it as, like, Santeria. They shouldn't have done Brujeria. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, because I, I'd be shocked, to, I'd be interested to see what some brujas, brujos are saying about it. Right. Well, and then on the flip side, too, you know, I don't, I don't really, like, I mean, yes, I've done, like, witchcraft and spells with Kat and, and even by myself, but I don't really consider myself a witch, and the, the reason is because I follow my grandmother's roots, my tribe's roots, Cherokee roots, Native American roots, um, which technically is a version of, of magic work, but they don't call themselves, um, they call themselves spiritual practitioners is really the word for it. Um, then you can get deeper in, into the healing, and then you can actually be like a shaman or a druid. But in order to really learn the real ways, you have to be like on the reses and like work with, you have to be kind of chosen. Like they believe the spirits choose you. You don't get to just wake up one day and be like, hey, I want to be a shaman. Like that's not how it works. But mm -hmm. when that was why it affected me, because I do apply my spiritualism from my grandmother and what she taught me in, in the tribe. And the first thing I thought of was the harm in taking a jar and just getting quote getting rid of it like I just I when, when you're working with spiritual um Native American spiritualism which is what I work with you you once again respect all life you respect all versions of life down to like an ant pile down to like an insect like literally like when I get spiders in my house I throw them outside like I don't kill them I throw them outside unless it was like from if I was in Australia and it was those big ass spiders like no I'd be burning the whole house down but when spider? no I would just burn <laughs> I would just walk away and burn my house down bye you can take the whole thing bye yeah no live there and have a nice life um but with with little spiders I do I take them and I throw them outside but like when I'm thinking of someone saying oh yeah do a you know, and spell work does exist with Native Americans, for sure. Of course it does. Usually it's more on the green witch side as well. It's also calling on your ancestors. Like, you don't want to mess with me. Like, I've had people actually admit to me they put spells on me and they put black, black magic spells on me. And my ancestors know and they go after them. Like, I, and I've seen it happen. So, like, it's scary. You don't want to go after me. Like, I'm so protective divinely, it's not even funny. But that's also because I respect my roots and my heritage. And that's what Kat's saying. You don't want to mix the wrong thing in with it because then your ancestors will punish you because they're saying you're using your gift and like your bloodline in an incorrect, invalidating way that we don't approve of. And we can take it away as fast as we've given you those like abilities. And it's true. when I thought of her in the video saying just take the spell jar and get rid of it, and the way they're, they, the way the cinematography looked was they're driving down literally a sand dune and it looked like the car was going to throw the jar out the window. It did. And, and it scares me because I do think of like, you know, my heritage or my spell work is what if a deer goes up to it and eats the glass and it kills the deer? Like it's part of the circle of life. Like don't litter. Don't, don't just get rid of it. Like that's not how this works. And if it has toxic chemicals in it, like formaldehyde or whatever people use, or in her case, um, what was it? Um... Yeah. Ammonia that can that can affect the ecosystem. You don't want to just throw. You know what I mean. So that's why I called Cat immediately because I was like I'm affected by what she said, 
and I don't agree with it on my spiritual side, which is it's similar to, to being in the Brujaria side, except Kat's obviously a different heritage. But it is, it's respecting and it's doing things correctly. And especially you shouldn't be teaching the public wrong things because you're going to get somebody out there that does it wrong. And they're going to listen to her. It. Yeah. And believes it. You yeah. know, like, that, that's the beautiful thing of any craft <coughs> path is that there is no, like set way to do things other than just like the basics like don't be an ass <laughs> that's a mood please don't like, you know what i mean like be careful with your intentions but they're not like rule books and the problem i have with it being in a you know and i think crystal would agree like the problem i i see with that being in a, a show that a lot of people <clears throat> see as like fact that's when things can get dangerous mm -hmm. can get dangerous do your research research it i believe she said eight jars Whoa! In, in the in the episode, she I wouldn't said be wasting cars, that many. Oh, like, that okay. Not a big house. But then, okay, let's let's play let's play devil's advocate for a minute, because that's my favorite thing. So even if she's saying to take eight jars and capture the, essentially, she's saying the ammonia will attract the dark energy or the entity. Okay, they don't even know what the entity is yet. I, and if it can be done and if it can be trapped, which I don't know if it can be by ammonia, that's something I've never heard of. That's some toxic chemicals. To me, that's definitely dark magic if you're using ammonia, in my opinion. Just go buy some sage. It's $5. Don't kill yourself with ammonia. Yeah. But, like, what if you're trapping their ancestors? Yeah. I'm just saying, if, if you're playing devil's advocate, what if you're trapping a good soul? Don't give the wrong information out until you're certain what you're doing. I don't think you should trap anything, in my opinion. Nope. That sounds like the Tennessee Wraith Chasers up in here going into oh. veteran hospitals, trapping demons and blowing them up in, like, devil's boxes. You know what I mean? Sounds stupid. Ugh, it wears me out. It exhausts me. It's exhausting. This has been a good chat. This Trying to clean really up good. this paranormal community. I'm like, I'm constantly picking up y'all's trash, okay? And I'm real sick of it. Just sign already. <laughs> Just God. sign us already. God. I'm looking through comments. Let's see what we got. Oh, Sister Mary Jones. Oh, oh, I called her Mother Teresa. Definitely not. I call her the beer drinker. <laughs> the beer drinker. I don't mean any disrespect with that. I'm just saying. No. She was... I will never get that image out of my head after seeing that glimpse. Facebook <laughs> like, Live. What's happening? Yeah. I'm thinking of, like, a nun. You know what I mean? Like, it's Kick back with the beer on her couch. She's on Facebook Live, Sister Mary. She was on Facebook Live, and she's, they're talking about, like, religious affirmations and, like, exorcisms, and they pan to Sister Mary, and she's got, like, her leg kicked up. <laughs> she's throwing back a brewski. I'm like, yep, you know that's a nun Keep right there. Screaming. I can't. I literally can't. Well, thank you guys so much for being here with us today. We appreciate you guys so much. This will be uploaded as a YouTube video and as a podcast. Uh, next week, Elfie will be back. And I think if we can squeeze in the book interview next week, we might try to do that. I'll get with Kat. It'll probably either be next week or the following week after that. Um, sorry we had some technical difficulties because uh, Kat has to go sage now. And clearly I do too. I've got some mail hanging out in here. Like, I don't have time for this. Oh, I, I would like to make a small little announcement, not trying to um, be petty. But I have an assistant that has been uh, they basically helping run my social media. I haven't been able to keep up with, like, comments, private messages, DMs on um, Instagram, both the Ghost Girl Diaries page and the Crystal Leander page along with weeding out any important emails that I have, there's a couple of little housekeeping things I'd like to say. Um, please don't email my professional email unless it's regarding a business deal. Because apparently I've had a, quite a few emails of uh, fans emailing I think somebody asked me for my phone number as well. I don't give out, I don't have a public phone number. I don't give out my phone number. Um, thank God I have my assistant now that's able to like sort of weed these through for me. But if you guys clutter up my professional email, that stops me from getting to people that I need to get to with the film aspect. So please don't clutter up the email. Only email my professional email if it's regarding a professional ordeal. 
because otherwise you're just you're stopping my progress don't stop my progress also I don't give out my phone number I don't I don't have a public phone number to give out um, if you're trying to get a hold of me cat goes through my emails and DMS and so does my assistant I don't get they get sent to me after they've been filtered so I'm just putting it out there just because we don't want to stop progress we want to keep going um, make sure you guys are following us on social media. I'm going to hopefully have another couple of little videos up this weekend on the YouTube channel. I'm going to um, do a welcome video for our new um, uh, memberships that are coming in. Kat, do you have any housekeeping things you'd like to add or anything you want to add to the end of the stream? Um, you know what? No. Not much, actually. I mean, I have, I have a YouTube video that's uploaded. And uh, I'm yes. excited to do the interview with Crystal soon. Yes. It's going to be really great. Get her book if you haven't, seriously. Aww. It's so good. It's so good. I know. I, I read a chapter last night because I haven't touched it since I let it, you know, like I released it. And I picked my book up last night because, like, there's a couple little things in there that are, you know, that I, I screwed up, but whatever. Um, and so it bothers me when I read it, when I have a couple little, like, you know, grammar issues that are in there. But I read a chapter, and I was like, damn, this is good. Who wrote this? I was like, who wrote this book? You know what I'm saying? Crystal did. Who's that? It's so good. It's so good. So thank you guys. So make sure you guys are with it. I just, I don't know. That was a horrible outro. Flesh flowers. <laughs> oh, my God. I think you gave it to me, you know? Sorry. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This will be up as a podcast. Make sure you are subscribed to our channel. Make sure you're following us on social media. And as always, we will catch you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Back, back, back from the dead.